algebra students, it's Mrs. Thompson. Welcome back. We're getting ready to start our section on 9.3. We're kind of extending what we've been learning about exponential functions. We're going to apply them in two, di two different situations. Exponential growth, and of course that's where our number is going to grow, whether it's a population or it's a dollar amount. We're going to study that, so you're going to need your calculators either way, whether we're doing exponential growth or decay, where the numbers are going to go down. So, like I told you, exponential growth occurs when a quantity increases. So, go ahead and circle that word. That's going to be very, very important. And the formula we're going to use is right here. And that should say y. <laughs> um, y equals a, which is our starting amount. Okay, that didn't change from our last um, exponential formula that we used, A times B to the X power. A is still your starting amount. It could be a starting population and the amount of money that you uh, borrowed. It could be uh, for, that would be for interest bearing accounts. It could also be the amount of money that you put into a bank account and you're trying to earn some interest on that. So um, then we have one plus R. Remember what I hammered on before. I told you that if B is greater than 1, that's going to show growth. And I mentioned that in the last section, 9-2, that that is definitely true. And that is happening here with the 1 plus R. This is a guarantee that you're going to have a number that's bigger than 1. And R is going to be some percent that they give you. You're going to convert it to a decimal, and then you're going to add it to the 1. And then T is time. So everything is pretty similar to what we were expecting. So A is a starting amount, just like that was. 1 plus R, that's going to be our B, which is our common ratio, basically the ratio that we're raising it by. T in this context will be time. Um, that wasn't necessarily time, but it could have been any amount, any uh, number of cycles, whatever it could have been. All right, you're going to need a calculator, so hopefully you've got that handy. In exponential growth, the original value of a painting is $1,400, so circle that amount. That's going to be our starting amount of this painting, $1,400. And the value increases by 9% each year. So this is going to be our R once we convert it into its decimal form. So R is going to end up being 0 0.09. We're going to write an exponential growth function. So that's the first thing we need to do. Let's put a little one, number one by that. And then we're going to find the value of the painting in 25 years. And that'll be the second thing we do. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is take our function, y equals a times 1 plus r raised to t. And we're going to write a function filling in for a and filling in for r. So we're going to say, okay, a is the starting amount. So that's going to be 1,400 plus 0.09 raised to the t power. That's number one. That's writing an exponential growth function. We know it's growth because when you add 1 plus 0.09 to get 1.09, that is a number bigger than 1. That means this number is going to grow. The second thing they want us to do, and this is where your calculator is going to come into play, you are going to take your equation and instead of putting t, now we're going to put the time amount that they gave us in the problem. This is going to be your t right there, the 25 years. This painting is value, its value is increasing every year by 9%. Okay, so get out your calculators, turn it on, and let's plug it in. 1400, you'll need your parentheses, 1.09 parentheses, raise that to the 25th power. Now, because we're dealing with money, you need to round to the penny. Be precise. Don't round it to the dime. Round it to the penny. So hopefully, that's what you got. $12,072.31. So the key is you need to know the formula. Okay, get that memorized. It's kind of an offshoot of y equals a times b to the x. And then, of course, know where all the numbers go and be able to plug it in and solve. All right, so we'll leave this one for you. This will be an extra credit problem, so try that on your own and see what you come up with, and I will check it tomorrow in class. Thanks for listening.